Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome a very special guest and that's uh, Alex Mashinsky, the CEO and founder of Celsius Network. How are you going, Alex? Great, great. Good to be with you guys. You guys are in the, the lending and borrowing space. It's one of the hottest areas right now and I really love how your passion comes through when you talk about banks and rewarding the individual. So for those that uh, haven't followed, what does Celsius Network do? Sure, so Celsius is a membership organization. It, it it really focuses on enabling the consumer to earn high yield on its money. We feel that uh, banks all over the world uh, are taking basically advantage of their customers. It's a, uh, they're not paying enough or nothing for the deposits. So over time, uh, they've lowered the rates that they pay us down to zero. And effectively, we are just giving the money to the bank because it's a safe place to store uh, the cash, but it's not a very good relationship. Most banks, uh, especially in Australia, they have like 17, 18% return on capital and they could easily pay three, five, even 7%. Uh, but they choose not to because basically it's almost like a monopoly of three or four banks that kind of dominate the industry. Yeah. Uh, so we think that we can do better. We, we created, uh, basically we have 16 different, uh, cryptocurrencies that you can invest in. Some of them are stable coins, some of them are staking coins, and some of them are the traditional Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. And uh, they yield uh, anywhere between five and uh, 10%. Uh, and uh, again, we act in the best interest of our community in the best interest of our depositors because the banks are not. Yeah, and maybe taking a step back uh, for people that are just getting into this space, uh, that is what banks do, isn't it? They sort of they lend out money and they charge someone else an interest rate and they're meant to be rewarding those other people that give them capital in their savings accounts. But that whole model's kind of been squeezed these days and we even see negative interest rates in some countries. Well, the, the banks continue to earn a lot of money on their deposits, right? Because they're issuing loans to businesses and individuals and so on. They just don't give that money uh, back to the deposit. They give it to their shareholders. So if you look at the uh, any of the American banks or the Australian banks, you'll see that they make uh, billions of dollars uh, worth of uh, returns, worth of income per year. And all of that is either... Uh, paid to the management team or given as dividends or stock buybacks uh, to the shareholders of the bank. Uh, you as an individual, the, the person who worked really hard to earn this capital, uh, do not get to benefit from this. And we think that uh, really all the power the banks have is because uh, we give them uh, our deposits, right, for almost for free. Yeah. And it's time somebody did something about it. Absolutely. Now, in the world of crypto, uh, it's a fine line, I guess, for people that are new to this between a scam and a way to earn a bit of yield on your cryptocurrency. So I, I generally tell people, you know, these uh, projects that reward people for signing up uh, people and projects that promised a high yield paid out uh, daily, they're the sort of ones you got to be really careful of. But that sort of 7 to 10% a year is probably as high as it gets, isn't it, for a realistic project that's actually putting that money to work? Yeah, and, and I agree with you. I think obviously there are always scammers out there you should be really worried about. And so you have to vet uh, not just the project, but also the people behind the project and the investors and the community. I mean, uh, you know, the internet is, uh, it works for good, but it also works for bad, right? So the internet is full of people who will tell you if this is a good project or not. And uh, obviously if, if, if this was a scam, there would be plenty of people out there saying, Oh, I gave them the money. I didn't get it back, or I didn't earn the interest, or they promised one thing and and delivered something else. So, and and that's also the opportunity. I mean, I think part of because it's so hard to find good yielding projects, uh, that's how the bank get away with with paying nothing for that capital, right? So, uh, you know, we, you know, again, if you look at my background, I, I. You know, I don't, uh, I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing it because um, I, I think that somebody has to take action and create this type of organization that, that will act in our best interest. And, um, you know, Celsius, that's the mission of Celsius. We now have over $260 million on deposit. So that's coins that people gave us. Um, and we've paid millions of dollars in interest. 
and any one of your viewers can try it out. You can withdraw the money at any time. There's no lockup. And as long as you stay with us, uh, you earn the yield. We pay the same to a person that same percentage to the person that has $10 or $10 million, right? We don't give the fat cat more and kind of subsidize it by charging fees to the poor, yeah. which is what banks usually do, right? Banks make, in the United States, bank made $36 billion from charging overdrafts, right? I mean, uh, it's just crazy, crazy stuff. So I think, you know, the opportunity is really to build trust over time. I'm not expecting anyone to trust us overnight. And also, look, we explain very clearly how do we make the return, where did the money comes from, and how does the whole system work. And we invite people to try it out. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, go find something better. I don't think there's any shortage of people that uh, trust banks in Australia after that uh, Royal Commission we've had recently. So. Can you maybe walk us through an example? If I've got some Bitcoin or Ether or stable coins on my hardware wallet, um, how I deposit to you and then how it goes to work and how I get that interest. Sure. So let's first go through a traditional process, right? Of what happens when you take your paycheck and you deposit it in your bank, right? So traditionally, uh, your bank takes that money immediately and immediately lends it to your neighbor uh, on their credit card, right? Every time you charge your credit card, and you don't pay your bill in full, uh, uh, you're effectively borrowing money from uh, one of your peers. It's a person that may have stood in front of you in the bank account uh, or in an ATM uh, and made a deposit when you made a withdrawal, right? The bank just immediately lends the money out, pays you nothing, charges these customers 20 to 25% on their credit cards, right? So, and they get to keep most of that money, right? And the way we operate is we, because we are not a bank and we don't have a license, we cannot accept uh, fiat currencies, but we can accept cryptocurrencies. So we can accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, stable coins, as you mentioned. And stable coin, you can buy them from the issuer. We don't sell any of these coins. You, you already have to have them or buy them from somebody who issues them, like Circle or TUSD and so on. And then if you download the Celsius network app, uh, either on the App Store, or an Android, we basically issue an address. The address is a BitGo address. So BitGo is our uh, custodian. Uh, they're a very well-known custodian. They have $100 million in insurance from Lloyd's. So any coins you deposit straight Sorry. You're right. So they go st yeah, this goes straight into BitGo and then we are looking for borrowers. So if you gave us Bitcoin, we're looking for Bitcoin borrowers. If you gave us stablecoin, we're looking for fiat or stablecoin borrowers. And these borrowers um, have a variety of reasons why they need these coins, right? We only lend coins to hedge funds. So that our counterparties, the people that we lend to, are on average companies with anywhere between 50 to 100 million in assets. And they would come to us and basically try to borrow this or that asset to do market making, uh, to do trading. For example, they'll, they'll arbitrage the price on the spot and in the futures or in the option market, or they want to short some of these coins, right? So they basically pay us interest to borrow these things. We collect the interest and we distribute the interest pro rata to all of our Bitcoin depositor, all of our Ether depositors, and we give 80% of what we collect. So if we lend, let's say, 1,000 Bitcoin and we charge 10%, at the end of the year, we'll have 100 Bitcoin in income, right? This is the income that we generate. And out of that 100 Bitcoin, we would give 80 Bitcoin back to the community. We actually pay interest every week. So you, if you have your, our wallet, you would see your balance increase every week and you can withdraw. You can decide after one week, okay, I had enough. I need the money for something else and you can withdraw it and use it for anything else. We don't have any penalties. We don't have any fees. We don't have any early termination fees, no hidden fees, um, which you will find with a lot of our competitors who kind of try to play this game, but can't really pay what we pay. Yeah. So 
The next question I had was actually about BitGo, which you just touched on, and it's really exciting to see that space mature throughout crypto winter, I guess, to encourage those head funds. And the big smart money is not going to park somewhere that's not insured. So how's it been for you to sort of watch that unfold? And do you think insurance in custody is another big wave that's going to unfold? Yes, look, I, there's a lot of great custodians. Gemini is a good custodian, uh, BitGo, um, you know, there's a lot of them all over the world. We also work with uh, custodians like in Singapore and other jurisdictions, not just in the United States. And uh, so we have offshore customers or foreign customers who don't want their assets to be in the United States. And for them, we can park these assets offshore and not touch U.S. jurisdiction. Um, but I think the custodianship industry is developing quickly. And there's a lot of um, basically both technological advancements as well as like the, the breadth of the services has been broadened uh, uh, rapidly where the number of coins, the type of coins that are support and supported have been increasing, which allows uh, people to earn return, not just on the Bitcoin or Ethereum, but also on many other type of assets. Now, we're in a low yield environment globally. And if we have another downturn, there's all this speculation about how low interest rates can actually go. So do you see that as another uh, way of waiting to happen to draw people again that are chasing that yield? And is that yield that's really attractive at the moment? Is that a function of supply and demand where that's going to compress if it gets uh, really popular? Well, there's definitely going to be pressure on us uh, uh, to continue to generate like we pay 8.1% on stable coin, which is obviously 20 times more than what average person earns in a bank. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and if we had billions in assets, we would definitely, that would compress the rates of what we're paying out, right? So yeah. joining, uh, joining early has its benefits and uh, the rates go up and down every week based on how much we can generate. If we earn more, we raise the rate. If we earn less, we lower the rate. But I can tell you that basically the the regulators and the central banks around the world have lowered the interest rates uh, to enable the banks to kind of recapitalize themselves. And now that the banks have recapitalized themselves a few years ago, and they were supposed to raise the rates, but none of them have raised the rates. And and what's happening is that we 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 the consumer, we the the source of the deposits are getting penalized. The banks continue to make record profits, right? I think yeah. almost every bank in Australia recorded record profits, yeah. record bonuses for their executives, but we are not getting any of that. So so it's just not a fair, if this was a marriage, it would be annulled and it will be, it will be terminated, you know, with one party leaving very, very frustrated. But for some reason, we continue to take this abuse and, and just uh, continue to deposit all of our hard earned money every week, every month, with the same banks to steal from us every day. So again, uh, Founder Magazine just did a great uh, cover story on, on, on this topic on Celsius and on me. And they actually went and looked at every Australian major bank and looked at their balance sheet and validated everything I was talking about, right? The return on capital and how much these guys are making. Because they, they were basically saying it can't be that easy, right? It can't be that these guys are making 18 or 90% yeah. and not paying anything back to the consumer. But that's exactly what's happening every day. Even just you see, most, yeah, most people don't understand the, how inflation is eating away at their money. And they don't understand how you can make money on money. So they don't think that their $500 or $1,000 is meaningful, right? Because they don't see that the banks have millions of customers and they have billions of dollars that they collect and then deploy and make 19 or 20 percent of compound interest is one of the most uh, powerful tools in the universe as they say and uh yeah warren it, buffett said that yes even uh even recently in australia the central bank cut rates and then the the four banks two of them didn't pass on that saving to people on their mortgages but they also dropped the savings rate more than the rate cut again just to look after themselves so i think every day more people are waking up to this Look, if, if this was a, 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 an Italian mafia and they would be basically uh, had a racket where they controlled the, any price, like the banks control the prices of interest, the, pri the interest income pricing, and all these people would be arrested and put in jail. But for some reason, 
there's effectively legal collusion going on between the different banks and no one is doing anything about it. So most, look, most hedge funds, most financial institutions earn anywhere between eight and 12%, right? And, and if you are a sophisticated investor and you buy into a hedge fund, you would usually pay uh, 20% of the earnings and you would keep 80% to yourself, right? And the hedge fund's job is to distribute all the earnings to its depositors, to the people that gave it the money. So we, we're not a hedge fund, but we act like a hedge fund, right? We, we only represent the interests of our depositors. We don't represent the interests of the borrower. We don't represent the interests of exchanges or other people that participate with us. And like I said, when these hedge funds come to us and want to borrow one, an asset like Bitcoin, they have to give us collateral, right? So we hold their collateral to make sure they return the, the coins. If they don't return the coins, we use the collateral to buy back the Bitcoin or the stable coin or whatever yeah. uh, they borrowed from us. So uh, to date, again, we've done over $2 billion in loans. So that's 10 times more than anyone else. And uh, we have not had a single default or a single termination or a single liquidation. And neither on the borrowing side with consumers or on the lending side with the hedge funds. Cool. So I think we're doing our job. We're doing it better than most because we only lend against assets, right? And asset-backed lending is a very, very safe business compared to issuing credit to people and hoping they're going to pay you back. Exactly. The next question I had was about uh, regulation. And I know recently we've seen, you know, Binance delisting U.S. coins and, you know, all these this you know, specific treatment of U.S. residents. So do you want to talk about how regulation works for you? Sure. So from the beginning, we um, committed to be fully compliant. And the, fully compliant doesn't just mean in, in, the New York, in the New York or United States. Fully compliant means that in every jurisdiction where we operate or we allow customers to deposit coins with us, we will operate according to the local rules. So... Uh, we can accept deposits in cryptocurrencies almost everywhere in the world, but lending is harder. So lending, you need to have uh, partners. You need to have sometimes bank partners. Sometimes you need to have money transmission licenses and so on. So we did not have the same problems that Binance had. Um, uh, uh, we think, we again, we have opinion letters from three different law firms that are stating that uh, uh, we are operating legally in all these jurisdictions. And so all the services we provide today are, in our view, are compliant based on the advice that we're given by uh, these different law firms. Fantastic. How have, how have the partnerships been so far? I think I saw uh, BSAVE just today at time of recording. So how's that interest been? You mentioned BitGo already as well. Yeah, so we have many different partnerships. We try to work with best of breed, um, both on, uh, on the lending, on the borrowing, on the custody. Um, and so we work with a variety of uh, neo banks, right? We usually try to work with a smaller bank, empower the community bank or the new entrant who, uh, because us working with them helps them with their uh, ability to compete with the big banks and also allows us to use their license or their services in different countries. So the other part we do besides lending the coins is also lend dollars or foreign uh, uh, currency, right? For fiat. So if you give us Bitcoin or Ethereum, you can then borrow against it. Otherwise, you have to sell it and pay taxes. Yeah. But with this format, you can margin borrow. And through the margin borrow, you can effectively uh, defer your taxes in a way that allows you to um, uh, benefit the way Warren Buffett and Donald Trump and many other rich people uh, basically defer taxes until they die. Yeah. You know, like... Uh, uh, so the average Joe, the average person, unfortunately, when you go to school or college, they don't teach you all these tricks, right? The, the rich people get to do them all the time because they're fancy lawyers and fancy accountants. But most of us, the average person, have to pay all the taxes and then whatever is left, we give for free to the bank and then the bank makes all the money on our money. So we get penalized almost twice. So part of what we're trying to do is automate a lot of these functions, meaning you don't have to... When you deposit with Celsius, you don't need to know how the interest works, lending, borrowing. You don't have to do a single click. You deposit, your money goes to work immediately, right? Until you withdraw, it's working for you. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to empower the people, bring the power back to the people and enable them to earn, have their money work for them instead of them working for their money. 
There's a lot of uh, good projects out there. And then the next question we get is, well, how does the token tie into this all and what's its utility? So can you explain that uh, for people at home? So yeah, there were about 2000 ICOs, as you know, unfortunately, many of them did not deliver on the promise, but uh, that doesn't mean that all the projects are bad. It does not mean that all the ICOs are scams. And, and it's important that, for example, with Celsius, if you are serious about the project, you can go online and search for our white paper or technical paper, and you would see that what we promised two or three years ago is exactly what we're building and delivering. Uh, and and we raised money from the community. We did not raise money from fancy VCs or deep-pocketed investors. We had over 1,500 contributors, people like the people watching your show, who gave us $100, $500, $1,000, and asked us to build this. Right, and and they basically looked at the background of the of the founding team and said, okay, these guys actually have a chance to build something that will act in our best interest. And we uh, created the token. Right, the token is an incentive inside the community. It's almost like our own currency that enables our participants to earn more interest. So if you're earning eight percent in stable coins, you could earn even ten percent if you get paid in our sell token. Right or you pay less in interest. So if you borrowed money from us and we charge you 9% interest, but you pay with our token, you would pay seven point something, seven and a half percent interest as an example, right? So, so you have the benefits which actually redistribute the token inside our economy and by doing that, help us finance our business, right? It's good for our community, it's good for the business and the price of the token kind of varies. It depends on the amount of volume of business that we do we publish all that information right in our app. If you take our app and you press on a little cell uh, uh, button on the bottom right side, you would see, you can lo look, go into the community page. You will see how much we have on deposit, how many loans did we issue. And, and you will see the activity. You can see if the activity is going up or are people with joint coins or people depositing coins. You can watch it. It's a real time feed. And that tells you if the community is growing if the community is thriving or is it shrinking and hurting? As long as it's growing, then obviously the cell token uh, will have more utility and more value inside the Celsius community. Fantastic. I really love everything you've described today, Alex, and I really think that this is uh, a great gateway drug for people to learn about banking, crypto, debt, money, all that sort of thing, and you're giving them the tools to uh, earn that interest as well. So do you think crypto is a, a social movement where people are learning all this stuff? Yeah, it, it is. And it's important that people understand why we're using the blockchain at all, right? So so I, I have a unique uh, story to tell, right? The, the, I was born in communism. I grew up in socialism in Israel. I spent the last 30 years in the United States in the capitalism, right? So I tried all three systems. <laughs> yeah. And all these systems have benefits, but they also have problems, right? In the United States, uh, the top 1% has the same assets as the bottom 90%, which is crazy, right? So obviously the capitalism works great for me as an entrepreneur and a founder and, and somebody who built several companies, but it does not work for 90% of Americans. And and I, I came from nothing, right? So I, 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 I know what it is not to be able to pay your paycheck, not to be able to pay your rent, going with your ATM to the cash machine and not having anything being able to take out right like yeah. even the 20 dollars bill so and and it's not because you're a bad person or you're not working hard enough it's just because the system is structured in a way that does not allow you to progress in life to move up the layers to the top of the pyramid and the opportunity that we are given with the blockchain with decentralization is to reorganize that entire pyramid right so so if you think of decentralization and the blockchain is a circle. In that circle, it's like a different universe in which you are valued based on your contribution to society and not how much profit you can generate for your boss. Yeah. And that's really the difference, right? So the reason we're using blockchain is because it allows us to distribute this interest that we're earning to anyone on the planet. A person from Australia can deposit $2 and earn interest on $2 and be treated exactly the same way as a person in New York was depositing a million dollars. So the opportunity for us is to include, to enable seven and a half billion people on this planet 
to have income and and generate fair living and 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 have respect uh, for their life and for what they want to do in life and not necessarily have to work in a job because they have two kids or they have a wife or they have a mortgage or whatever and and I feel that that this pyramid that all these giant pyramids that we're building with very large companies kind of effectively dictating what we do every day uh, is just not working for the major- majority of the people. So we we have a gig economy and we have go work for a big company or go work in a gig economy. These are just not, shouldn't be the only two options. So uh, we're here to empower the average person to live the life they want to live. And, and part of doing that is, again, is, is having making sure that they can have a decent income and that income will generate additional income for them in the form of, of uh, interest income, interest yeah. return. I think that's probably a good place to finish unless you've got any final thoughts and I'll place all the links in the description below for people to check it out. So look, the, the, the main thing is really a call to action to your community to learn about the blockchain, learn about cryptocurrencies. And again, there are bad things. There are things that, that you need to learn to avoid. It's not like everything is uh, wonderful in crypto land. Uh, but it's important that people understand that the only chance we have, right, to reset the community and to reinvent the community in in, in, in this dream that Satoshi uh, showed us, right, is by empowering all of us, taking money from the banks and from the financial institutions and depositing it or empowering it with the cryptocurrencies that are here to really help us, uh, uh, you know, recreate the system. So I'm calling on all of your uh, troops out, out there in in in, uh, in Australia to learn more about it and recruit their friends and, and join the community, join the movement, join the revolution and really help uh, make the world, world a better place. Awesome. Great uh, place to finish there, Alex. Uh, thanks so much for everything you guys are doing and I'm sure we'll talk again in the future. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys.